Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Welcome to today's video, which is going to be a recommendations video of sorts. Basically, I'm gonna be showing you guys a book that I think is pretty well-known and pretty popular, and then recommending you guys a less well-known book that I think is similar to the popular book. So if you liked one of the books, you'll probably like the other and vice versa. It could be that maybe you've heard of the less well-known book, but you haven't read the popular book. And a lot of times when I watch these videos, I get kind of scared because I'm worried that maybe the similar in the books is a spoiler but I'm not gonna spoil anything for you guys the similarities in this books aren't like plot twists or anything like that these books just give me similar vibes maybe the characters felt similar maybe they have the same kind of tropes or themes in them so I promise if you've read one of these I'm not going to be spoiling whatever is in the other so I hope you guys get some great recommendations out of today's video the first book I'm gonna show you guys I feel like a lot of people are gonna roll their eyes at this but it is the book that got me back into reading I feel like it's the book that got a lot of other people back into reading and after reading it I was trying to find books that gave me the same feeling I felt when I read this book and that's Verity by Colleen Hoover. This book is following Lowen and she is a struggling writer. She ends up taking a job as a ghost writer for this very successful author named Verity Crawford. Verity Crawford was in an accident so she's not able to continue writing her very popular and beloved book series so Lowen takes on the job and in doing research to continue on this series for Verity, she ends up going to the Crawford home and going through Verity's office, going through her notes, and doing her research. And while she's going through Verity's things, she comes across this manuscript that seems to be an autobiography of Verity's life. And they're very dark and disturbing details in this manuscript that have Lowen questioning what's real, what's not, is she safe in the house, who can she trust, and it is just a very suspenseful wild ride. So if you've read this book and enjoyed it, and it's a book that got you back into reading, I feel like you will enjoy Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. And this is one that I don't ever see compared to Verity, but it is the first book I read that gave me the closest vibes to Verity. And I think that if you liked Verity, you will really enjoy Home Before Dark. So Home Before Dark follows a young woman named Maggie. And when Maggie was little, her family lived in this house for a short time and they fled the house because it was supposedly haunted. And Maggie's father ended up writing this book about the strange things that happened while they were in the house and it ended up being a bestseller. But the book was also kind of controversial. Some people don't believe that the house is really haunted. Some people do believe it. Maggie is on the side of not believing it. She was too little to remember what actually happened in the house when she lived there. But in present day, we're following Maggie and her father has now passed away. So this supposedly haunted house is now going to Maggie. So she's going back to this house to get it ready to sell. And while she's there, weird things start happening and she starts questioning if maybe her father's book was real. So this book reminds me so much of Verity because it has that book within a book element that I loved so much in Verity. And we're flipping back and forth between chapters of her father's book that he wrote and then chapters of Maggie in present day. So you're kind of seeing things play out in the book and then our narrator trying to figure things out and work things through in present day in both of these stories. And I feel like both of these books also kind of have that unreliable narrator quality to them. You don't really know who to believe. You don't really know what's real or not and I absolutely loved both of these books. I think they're very similar. I especially think they would be perfect to read during spooky season. Keeping on with the thriller note, The Kindred Killing by Peter Swanson. I feel like this is a very widely beloved thriller. It's definitely Peter Swanson's most popular book I would say and I do think it is on the darker side. So this book is about Lily and Ted and they are strangers but one day they meet up at this airport bar and they're drinking and they just start spilling their life secrets to one another and Ted reveals to Lily that he he thinks his wife is having an affair and cheating on him and he makes this offhand comment that he wants to kill his wife and Lily is like yeah you should do it you should kill your wife and I'll help you and it is a dark wild ride from there and if you liked the kind worth killing I think you will also enjoy the mother-in-law by Sally Hepworth this one definitely is not as dark but it reminded me so much of the kind worth killing I feel like the back of the book gives away more than you really should know going into this I went into this knowing very little and I'm really glad that I knew what I did. Basically, I think all you need to know is we're following the relationship between Lucy and her mother-in-law, and it's kind of a strange relationship, and it ends in murder. So these books remind me of one another because we're getting two perspectives. In this book, we get Diana, the mother-in-law's perspective, as well as her daughter-in-law, Lucy's perspective, and I love that it flips back and forth, and it's also kind of dual timeline. We see things that are happening in the past, and then the way they kind of play out in present day. This book was also kind of 
the same way where we're getting Ted and Lily's perspective, seeing their backstories, seeing how the things that happened to them in their past are affecting what's going on in the present. And in both of these books, I liked all the point of views the same amount. I feel like sometimes in books you definitely have a preference and you're like rushing to get through one set of chapters to get to the next. In both of these books, I was so gripped by all the chapters, by all the point of views, and by both timelines. Very, very engaging stories. This one is definitely a little bit lighter. If you're wanting a thriller that's still very suspenseful but not too dark or heavy, I think this would be a good one. But it did remind me a lot of The Kind Worth Killing and had elements that I loved in this book in this one. The next book I want to talk about could also be considered a thriller, but it's definitely one that I would say is just more suspenseful, not super dark and heavy. And that is a recent read for me. It is Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. I actually listened to this one on audio, which I highly recommend because Leanne Moriarty is an Australian author. Her books all take place in Australia, so they're narrated by an Australian narrator. And it just makes you feel like you're immersed in the story. It makes everything come to life that much more. So highly recommend this one on audio. But in Big Little Lies, we're following three different women. We're following Celeste, Jane, and Madeline. And they each have very different family dynamics. They come from different backgrounds, but they're all connected because they have children that go to the same school. And the storyline of this book is leading up to this event that happened at the school's fundraiser night. It's alluding that something very bad happened. And we're trying to figure out what happened as well as seeing these women's backstories and their day-to-day -day lives and learning about them along the way. I think if you like Big Little Lies, you would definitely like The Family Next Door by Sally Hepworth. Again, another Sally Hepworth. I love her so much. And Leanne Moriarty and Sally Hepworth are just two authors that get compared a lot anyway. They're both Australian thriller authors, but I say thriller lightly. It's more like literary fiction with a suspenseful plot. When I was reading Big Little Lies, it reminded me so much of The Family Next Door. In The Family Next Door, we're also following three different women's perspectives, and they all come from different family dynamics, and you see them in this very like suburban setting. You see their background stories as well as their day-to-day -day lives and basically the plot is centered around this event that happens where this new woman moves into their neighborhood and she kind of breaks the mold of what they're used to all three of them kind of live more traditional lifestyles and this woman is in her 40s she's unmarried she doesn't have a child and the women kind of feel like there's something up with her they feel like she's a bit different they want to know more about her so there's definitely that suspenseful undertone to the story where we're trying to figure out more about this new character and see how all the women's lives intersect and that's one thing I really love about both Sally Hepworth and Leanne Moriarty's books. You have all these very different characters and they're all so unique and interesting, but they all kind of come together and their stories weave into one in some way and you're trying to figure out how. And they're both just so good, so entertaining. Again, I would recommend both of these on audio. I think the same narrator does a lot of Leanne Moriarty's books as well as Sally Hepworth's. I think if you like one of these authors' books, you'll definitely enjoy the other. Okay, one last set of thrillers to recommend you guys. This one leans more on the dark gory side. We have a Dark Academia book in here. So the first book I'm going to recommend is the Mindfuck series by S.T. Abbey. This is actually a set of five novellas. I believe they're all on Kindle Unlimited. You can read them all individually or I think they're available bound up into one larger book. But each novella ends off on a cliffhanger so once you finish one you're going to immediately want to jump into the next one. And basically this book is following a woman named Lana and she is a serial killer and she ends up having a romance with the FBI agent who is assigned to her case. So it is just very suspenseful, very high stakes. I was on the edge of my seat the whole time reading this. You're like, oh my gosh, what's gonna happen if this FBI agent finds out that she is the killer he's been looking for? And you might be thinking, why would you be rooting for a main character who is a killer and her romance? But when you see her backstory and see why she's doing the things she's doing, you definitely have more empathy for her and her situation. And it really is such a wild ride and so entertaining to read about. I know so many people loved and enjoyed the Mindfuck series. So if you did, I think you should check out They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. This one is more of a dark academia thriller and we're following our main character who is a professor at this college. And similarly, she is also killing men, but men who have done wrong things to women. So you do have a reason to root for her a little bit more. She's more of like a vigilante type character and she is trying really hard not to get caught, but the police are kind of on the case. And it's a very, again, intense high stakes situation. Like, is she gonna get found out? 
out what's gonna happen. This book was full of twists and turns that I was not expecting. Each twist in this book caught me off guard and I was so shocked by it. And it reminds me so much of the Mindfuck series because you have that main character who is definitely morally gray, but she kind of gives you something to root for because she's more of like a vigilante type character. So this book reminded me so much of the Mindfuck series when I was reading it. And I definitely think if you like one, you will like the other. The Midnight Library by Matt Haig is definitely an OG book talk book. It's very popular. I actually read it for the first time this past January, but it's definitely a very life lesson thematic type of book. We're following our main character who is contemplating ending her life, but she ends up getting transported to this magical library where each book that she opens in the library gives her a chance to see what her life would have looked like if she made a different decision. And I really enjoyed the message of this book so much. I really enjoyed the magical realism element to this book. So if you liked this book, I definitely think you will enjoy Una Out of Order by Margarita Montemore. This book is also very thematically driven. It is magical realism as well. And in this book, we follow Una and she ages out of order. So her birthday is actually on New Year's Eve. So each New Year's Day, we don't know what year she's going to wake up in and how old she's going to be. It was so interesting in this book because you kind of get to see her experience different friends. She doesn't know who's going to be in her life, different stages of technology. Sometimes she's in the 1980s and then she'll be in the 2000s and she's like, what's an iPhone? What's Instagram? And learning to navigate all the changes in her life. And again, I loved the themes in this book. And I feel like just the way it explores different decisions we make and different life paths we can take and that magical realism element in both of them, these felt so similar to me. So I definitely think if you enjoyed one, you'll enjoy the other. Moving into romances, I'm gonna start out strong. Both of these books I'm gonna recommend are six star reads for me and some of my very favorites. People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry is by far my favorite favorite Emily Henry book. I think it's definitely the most rom com of her books too while still having emotional depth and I just absolutely adored the storyline in this and the characters. In this book we follow Poppy and Alex and they have been friends for a while. They have this tradition where even if they don't see each other they have this week-long vacation planned every summer. It's where they catch up and reconnect with one another but then in the present day you see that something happened and they haven't spoken in a couple years and they haven't gone on their yearly vacations in a while so we're trying to figure out what happened that tore them apart as well as getting to see the past timeline of them going on all these vacations with one another. So I think if you liked this book then you will definitely like Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. Now this one I think is the most of a stretch in terms of similarity but this one was more of just the vibe I felt and the characters. So Yours Truly follows these two doctors Brie and Jacob and they both end up working on the same ward and Brie and Jacob end up getting off on the wrong foot. Jacob comes across as kind of rude to Brie but then he kind of explains himself and explains what happened, why he came off the way he did and apologizing. And he explains himself to Brie through this note. And then it starts this exchange of notes to one another and their relationship develops from there. Like I said, these two books, the plots are very different, but to me, the thing that felt so similar were the characters. Both Brie and Poppy, our female main characters, felt very like quirky, but not in an annoying way. They were just very fun. And both our male characters in this kind of gave me that reserved golden retriever energy. But the thing to me that felt the most similar in these books was definitely the banter. Both of these authors know how to do banter. To me, these books were just the quintessential perfect rom-com. They just checked all the boxes of things I want when I'm reading a rom-com. And I feel like both of these books just had that element that made me feel like I was swept into the story. And in both the relationships in here, I feel like it started off on a good solid foundation of friendship before moving into something more romantic. Both of these books felt very rom-com-y, but also definitely had good emotional depth to them. Another rom-com I loved and I know is very popular is It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. This book is following Piper. She is our influencer party girly. One day her stepfather feels like she has gone overboard and her partying ways have gotten out of control. So he ends up forcing her to move to this small fishing town in the Pacific Northwest where her father who passed away is from and he wants to teach her responsibility so he forces her to renovate his dive bar there. While Piper is there she ends up meeting this very grumpy fish fisherman named Brendan who is very much total opposite of Piper. He feels like she's very out of touch and he's more down to earth but it ends up following their romance. It's very much grumpy sunshine. This book reminded me so much of The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. This one also takes place during the summer but it takes place in Alaska so very much a different setting. It's very cold and mountainous. In The Simple Wild we also are following an influencer named Kala. Kala's parents divorced when she was very young. Her father is this Alaskan bush pilot. He very much is like a living off the land type of guy. 
guy and her mom was total opposite of that. She was more city girl, definitely wanted a different kind of life than her father did. So when they divorced, she ended up moving to Toronto to live in the city with her mother. But Kala ends up getting a call from one of her father's friends that her father is sick. So she ends up flying out to Alaska to be with him and reconnect with him. And when she is there, she ends up meeting this very grumpy bush pilot named Jonah who works for her father. And it's a very similar situation. Jonah feels like Kala is not very down to earth. He is more grumpy, she is more sunshine, and it ends up following their romance. Our female main characters in these books, as well as our male main characters, the dynamic between the couples could not be more similar. I feel like The Simple Wild is literally, it happened one summer in a different font, in a different setting. The Simple Wild is definitely more emotional. It definitely touches on sad things in this book, while It Happened One Summer is a lot more rom com -y. But both of them had really good romance stories. I think The Simple Wild is definitely more of a slow burn too, but the couples and the characters in the books reminded me so much of one another. I have another Coho book I want to talk about, which is November 9th. I know that Coho is not everyone's favorite, and especially this book, I feel like it's a lot of hate, but it does have a very cool concept that I saw in another book that I wanted to recommend. So November 9th follows Ben and Fallon. They end up kind of meeting and having this instant connection, but their lives are about to go in very different directions. Neither of them are in a good place to start a relationship. So they come to this agreement that they're going to meet up once a year, every year on November 9th, and they're not going to have any contact outside of this one day. So we're following their relationship over the course of all these years on November 9th. And there's definitely an element of suspense in this book because Fallon starts to question Ben's intentions. So if you liked this book, even if you didn't, but you thought the concept of them meeting up one day out of the year was cool, I think you might like Darling Venom by Parker S. Huntington. I read this one on my Kindle and I believe it is still on Kindle Unlimited. But in Darling Venom, we're following our main character, Charlotte, and she ends up connecting with a guy who goes to her high school named Kellen. And they both are struggling with their mental health, so they come to this agreement that they're going to meet on the rooftop of their school every year on Valentine's Day. They make this promise to one another that they'll always meet there to make sure each other's mental health is good. But one year, Kellen ends up breaking this promise and does not show up. He doesn't meet Charlotte on Valentine's Day, so it ends up following the aftermath of that. There's also a romance that ensues. I don't really want to give more details than that, but the reason it reminded me of November 9th, aside from the fact that they meet up on this one day every year, is the romance kind of had this suspenseful element to where you know you're not getting the full story, you know there's more there, there is that suspenseful undertone, and we're trying to figure it out and it's revealed at the end. I thought both books did that so well. I think both of these books, they have this element to them where they're not going to work for everyone, but I think the people that really like them are hardcore fans. So if you do like one, if you like the concept, I do think you'll like the other. Getting into my favorites next, which are sports romances. The Deal by L. Kennedy is a very popular college hockey romance. This is the start to the off-campus series. Basically, in this book, we follow the star of the hockey team, our captain, Garrett Graham, and his relationship with Hannah Wells. So Garrett ends up getting a really bad grade on one of his tests. He needs to pull up his GPA in one of his classes. So he ends up going to Hannah for help. Hannah is very studious and very smart. So Garrett ends up proposing a deal to Hannah. He says, Hannah, if you tutor me and help me bring my grades up, I will pretend to be your boyfriend because I know you have a crush on the quarterback of the football team. He and I go to the same parties. We run in the same circles. So it'll make him jealous if he sees me with you and will help get his attention. So you can then date this quarterback that you like. If you like the deal, I think you will really like Behind the Net by Stephanie Archer. This is another hockey romance. It's not college. It is a professional NHL hockey romance and it is the start to a series as well. There's currently two books out, which I'm actually going to talk about the other book in this series in just a little bit. This book follows Jamie and Piper. Jamie is the goalie for his hockey team and he ends up hiring this assistant named Piper. And Piper and Jamie actually knew one another in high school, but they feel kind of embarrassed or think the other person doesn't remember them. So they're just actually acting like they don't remember one another, don't know one another. Feelings definitely start developing between the two of them. Jamie tries to hide his feelings by being very standoffish and keeping his distance, so he comes off as very grumpy, while Piper is our sunshiny girl and just wants everyone to like her, so she's wondering what she did, why Jamie hates her, and the reason I think these two books are so similar, aside from the fact that they're hockey romances, really is in the characters and their relationship and the character development especially. Both of our female characters in this are kind of dealing with something relationship wise from their past that our male main characters really help them work through and I just love to see the character development. I feel like both of our male characters in the deal and in behind the net are kind of unlikable at the start and you really see this growth and by the end they become completely likable characters.
characters and they've really turned a new leaf and I just love to see that character arc for them. I love the dynamic between both couples in this relationship and again seeing how our male main character helps our female main character work through some of the trauma that they experienced in the past and I thought both books were just really really sweet love stories. And our next sports romance is very beloved. It is The Right Move by Liz Tom Ford. This is book two in the Windy City series and this book follows our male main character Ryan Shea. He is a star in the NBA. He's more closed off, more reserved and his twin sister Stevie ends up approaching him and she's like hey my best friend is really going through it. She had a rough breakup. She needs somewhere to stay. She won't be around that often because she is a flight attendant. Can she crash at your place for a while? And because Ryan loves his sister and would do anything for her, he ends up agreeing to let her best friend Andy crash at his place for a little bit. They're both kind of gone a lot because both of their professions involve traveling. So this book does have a few tropes in it. Besides being best friend's brother, it's also fake dating. Ryan, I think, wants to be captain of the basketball team, so he needs to show that he has stuff in his personal life that he cares about. So he ends up asking Andy to be his fake girlfriend to show that he has priorities and things he loves outside of basketball to try and impress his coach. And the fake out by Stephanie Archer reminded me so much of the right move. So this is also book two in the same series as Behind the Net. It's the book that follows that book. And similarly, I feel like the right move is the fan favorite of the Windy City series. I feel like people definitely preferred the fake out to Behind the Net. I loved both books, but I did prefer the fake out a little bit more to Behind the Net. And this book is another hockey romance. We're following Rory and Hazel. Rory is definitely our more sunshiny, happy-go-lucky character. The trope in this one is also fake dating. Hazel's ex ends up getting transferred to play for the same hockey team as Rory. So she ends up fake dating Rory to show her ex that she's moved on. And Rory doesn't even need an excuse to fake date Hazel. He's kind of always had a thing for her. So he's more than happy to help her out. And aside from the fake dating tropes in this kind of reminding me of one another, I feel like even if you haven't read the right movie, you've probably heard a lot of good things about Ryan Shea. And I feel like one of the things that is so beloved about him is the way he shows love and his love language. Similarly, Rory also has his own love language and the way he expresses it throughout the book is super sweet. They both have different love languages. I kind of don't want to say so that you can go in and learn for yourself, but the way they show them is super sweet. And both the male characters definitely reminded me of one another in a way. Rory is definitely more outgoing, whereas Ryan Shea is more reserved, but the way they express love through their love languages definitely felt very similar. So I feel like if you liked the right move, you will like the fake out as well. And those are all the books I had to recommend to you guys today that felt very similar to me. So if you read and enjoyed one, I think you will enjoy the other. I hope you took away some great book recommendations from this video. So let me know if you plan to pick any of these up. Don't forget to give me a like if you did enjoy the video and subscribe to my channel if you're not already so that you don't miss out on any of my future book videos. And I will see you guys so soon in my next one. Bye guys.